be me. 3.5 game with a group from Alathid's infatuation. DM wants to play a game with a monster party. More specifically a monster general party. Normally cringe worthy enough to not hold my interest but this group was a ton of fun before so worth a shot. Convinced to read through the setting books not for the art for once. Setting is surprisingly dark when you ignore all the hot monsters. Extremely violent and rappy with a lot of end of the world scenarios. Unspeakable evil has never been so adorable. Decide we are going to be a low level goblinoid gang. Sexy the bugbear aka big sexy was a barbarian. Ponk the hobgoblin aka the boob goblin was a fighter and our glorious alcoholic leader with a stunning intellect of 10. Only one in the party who was literate, and that was just to make sure she could identify her drinks. Then the goblins which were the rogue triplets ho, lee, and fun. Last but not least my chakras the goblin savage bard. Chosen instrument is a gong taller than she is, plays it by frantically swinging her maul at it. Screech Owl familiar ee 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 makes her move silently checks even more insane and helps with her performance by screaming. Goal is to capture as many men as possible to drag back to our cave house. Mostly to make them reach high things and open stuff for us so we don't need to keep making sexy do it. Life's hard when most of you are 3 foot tall. First expedition out of the cave. Going to follow the roads to the nearest town to abduct some guys. Gun go find me a man. Get lost in under an hour. Only Pond can read the road signs and she's drunk. No idea where we are or how to get back home. Spend half the day following roads and circles. E doesn't want to do anything because it's still his bedtime. Ponk has a brilliant plan. Unroll a blanket. Fa has the highest spot check. Sexy throws her up in the air while the rest of us try to catch her with the blanket. Get lucky and see a merchant caravan traveling down the road on the fifth toss. Everyone gets in position and waits. Ready to spring the trap. Caravan has guards and what appear to be adventurers. New plan. Wait until the last cart goes by. Everyone piles in the back when the guards aren't looking while I quietly use lullaby with a gong. Six goblinoids, a gong, and an owl crammed in the back of a fur cart. Hiding under all the pelts. Goes good for about an hour. One of the guards walks behind the cart and passes a spot check. Cast sleep and drag him into the cart. Not enough HD to soak it all. Put Ho, Lee, and Fat asleep by accident. Doesn't matter Quarterman. Ponk smothers him every time he wakes up so he doesn't alert everyone else. 8 hours later. Night time. Still hiding in the cart. Caravan finally stopped and DEEE woke up. Slip out of the back and check around. Few fires going and they are setting up tents. Entire party has dark vision and good move silently checks. Let it begin. Sneak our way through the camp stealing all the buckets and cups we can find. Wait until we are all in position. Start flailing wildly at the gong while yee -ee -ee screams. Party dumps water on all the fires. Caravan thinks they are under attack by a war party. Merchants scatter and guards running around blindly. Sexy is taking her time picking out the biggest strongest man to hit on the head with a club. Ponk beelined for one guard in particular and grappled him to commence smothering. Holy fun are just running around kneecapping people and having a blast. After a few rounds everyone either ran off or is KO'd. Party didn't get hit a single time. Load the captives and as much loot as possible into the fur cart. Ride off in the middle of night. Still hitting the gong. Get home and take inventory. A cart full of animal hides, wine, lumber, spices we can't identify, and a crapload of seeds. Sexy bagged herself a lumberjack. Pond captured a mercenary who brewed as a hobby she could smell the booze on him. Holy and fud dragged back a flower merchant. Kraz kept the guard she put to sleep who used to be a chef. Put our new captured husbands to work making our home suck less. The lumberjack we creatively named Jack accepted his fate surprisingly willingly and built a wall for the front of the cave. Blows our tiny minds when he makes a functional door with hinges. Built us all beds so that we could stop sleeping on the floor. Sexy's was the size of a small room, Ponk's was extra soft and wide, the triplets had a 3 story bunk, and Kraz's was basically a sandbox filled with animal hides. Jack is now the group favorite, Ponk's man lovingly named Grog worked with Jack to make a brewery. He wasn't exactly thrilled about his new life but between the constant river of booze and smothering he usually couldn't get very far. Holy and fuzz boy they named Ka worked with Grog to start planting hops when he wasn't being forced to grow flowers or braid them into their hair. They had to track him down and drag him back a few times before he gave up. Last but not least Kraz's man first he was the first and buried in furs was in charge of feeding everyone and working alongside Ka to make sure we didn't all starve to death when we were too busy sleeping to go hunting. 
made sure to dominate the hell out of him so that he wouldn't try to poison us or run. Had that boy whipped. Cave home is now somewhat functional and doesn't look like it's inhabited by a bunch of goblins. Husband's manservants are actually making life easier but we're all chaotic neutral evil so we're going to need more. Party has no ethical qualms with this rationale. No rest until we have an army of men to make sure we never have to work again. Slavery is okay as long as it's perpetrated by cute girls. Be me. Still with the goblin party. Cave house looking good but we still need to actually do work now and then. Can't have that. Need more manservants husbands. Need to make an attempt to find the nearest village again. Go to make sure the boys don't try to run while we're gone. Leave Jack and Fess in charge of the cave since they are the most whipped. Orders not to let Ka run away again. Ponk makes sure Grog is too drunk to bother making a break for it. Reflect on the ethics of dominating and drugging innocent men to be our slaves for about 5 seconds before we set off to find more. Learned our lesson from last time. Don't leave home until it's dark. Failed to plan beyond that. Still can't read and Ponk is still drunk. Not too surprised when we get lost again. Try tossing fun again but she hits her head on a branch and vetoes the idea for a repeat attempt. Stuck wandering around the roads. Spot some fire in the distance after a bit and go to investigate. Adventuring party. Adventurers mean big strong men. Sexy is excited to add to her stud muffin harem. Spread out and sneak our way over to the fire. Four adventurers. Some skinny elf ranger is awake on watch. Send in Kraz and her gong because somehow she's the sneakiest. Smack him over the head with the maul. Everyone else just kinda wanders over. Got the elf ranger, a human fighter, a dwarf cleric, and some weird demonic spellman. Sexy laments over the lack of a barbarian. Naturally we all start bickering over which ones we are taking and who gets who. Fighter wakes up and rolls over to see what all the noise is. Entire party goes silent and stares at him. Eye contact for about 10 seconds. Sexy glares at him. Rolls back over. Resume bickering. The elf and dwarf and demon thingy are useless for breeding purposes. Would probably go all white knight on us anyway. The fighter doesn't have any redeeming qualities other than being a wuss. Unfortunately for him that's a quality we want. Knock the rest of the party senseless with clubs and take all their stuff. Even take their clothes because they're huge and we can make wardrobes worth of stuff out of them. Ponk has the caster's book and can hear it whispering to her. Book fails its domination attempt. Ponk's too drunk to notice or care. Drag the fighter back with us. Nobody particularly wants him but free labor is free labor. If we're lucky his friends will come looking for us and bring more free loot with them. Loot's always better when it shows up at your door with no effort on your part. Can't read signs for crap but we can backtrack with the best of them. Make it back to the cave and toss the new guy in a wooden cage. Not sure what good he is but it's a start. Boys have been busy making the cave less depressing. We're officially rocking the stone age technology when Jack makes a water powered hammer out of logs. Kraz loves the idea and demands a new one for her gong so she can work even less. We appear to have some sort of garden taking form in the front yard thanks to the rest of the guys. They are also cultivating the mushrooms that are growing all over the cave. First asks us to go get some livestock so that the guys don't need to rely on hunting to get meat. Gets shot down instantly since we don't want to work. Changes our minds when he explains that more livestock equals less hunting. Less hunting means less chores for us. Any work that means less work is good work. Bumble our way back out into the woods again. Ponk is actually capable of reading the road signs for once. Make our way to some farm on the outskirts of a small village. Sneak our way our way over and divide up the work. Holy fuck we're heading for the chicken coop while Kraz and Ponk go to find some pigs. Sexy wanders off somewhere to find something large and valuable. Kraz and Ponk get to the pigs and are impressed with how fat and lazy they are. Truly these beasts are something to aspire to. Try to push them. Nope. Can't lift them either. Even tried levering them with the clubs. Fat bastards won't move. Settle on bickering over how to get them out of the mud while sitting on them. Squawking and feathers coming out of the chicken coop at a rather ridiculous rate. Hear a thunk as a crossbow bolt hits the shed beside us. New plan. Sit on top of the biggest and meanest looking boar in the herd. Smash the gong. Book it as the farmer and his sons come out of the house. Plow through the gate. Pigs all make a break for it. See the triplets hauling ass with chickens under their arms. Sexy comes thundering along carrying a damn cow over her shoulder. Pigs and chickens and cows running all over the place. Bull is chasing the farmer. The night is a hellish mixture of screaming animals. Screaming people. And a gong that never stops. Escape into the woods with five hens. A rooster. 
a half wild boar, and a dairy cow. Good job team, get back to the cave. Something's wrong, don't see the men doing our work for us. Can't have that. Lee attempts to dramatically kick open the door, 3 foot tall and 40 pounds. Only really enough to make it lightly swing open but it's the thought that counts. Guys are all tied up and surrounded by overgrown lizard women. Cobbles trying to take our men. Or hell no. Fun asks the rest of the party whether our cave is filled with skinks or skanks. That line kicks off the biggest bitch fest this side of Farron. More insults and threats in 5 minutes than most campaigns have in months. Some of my favorites were overgrown geckos dragon shit with legs from us and flat chested troll snot and pig face shin humpers from them. Things boil over when their leader compares Ponk to Sexy's cow. Oh it's on bitch. Ponk tosses her greet club aside as Kraz hits the gong. Charges in with a grapple and shove. Both hit the floor. Catfight in the middle of the cave. Lots of hair spine pulling and clawing. Both sides are cheering on their respective boss. Guys are just staring in awe as two groups of tiny psychotic monster girls fight over who gets to enslave them. Except for Grog. He's rooting for his waifu. Goes on for about a dozen rounds due to bad rolls and tiny damage. Eventually Pond gets angry and takes the penalty for lethal damage. Rolls a crit. Finishes the kobold with a headbutt so brutal it caused 2 points of recoil damage. Get a delicious morale bonus. Team Gooblin cheers and celebrates with a charge. Slap kobolds all over the cave with clubs and mauls. Sexy is using them as weapons when she isn't going hulk. Kraz summons a pack of owls to go peck at them because it's hilarious. Beat the absolute tar out of them and tie them up. Untie the guys while we debate what to do with the kobolds. Have the boys start building pens for the animals while we think. Ponk as usual is the woman with the plan. Next day when we stole more pigs from the farmer we left an equal amount of butt naked tied together kobolds in their place. Left a sign that said thief is in front of them. We also stole a bull that sexy wrestled into the ground but we didn't have a big enough lizard to leave for that. The cave now had a mostly self-sustaining farm with cows, pigs, and chickens as well as a garden and mushroom farm. Jack is working on a primitive lumber mill while first teaches the new guy we named him Wimp how to tend all the livestock. Ka has mostly accepted his fate as the gardener and impromptu hairdresser. He only tried to escape twice that week. Steady diet of booze and boobs has turned Grog around to Ponk's side. Next goal is to capture other useful men so that we can pull ourselves out of the stone age. This whole civilized thing is kinda nice when you don't have to work and get pampered all day. Maybe one day we'll even let the guys wear something other than loincloths. Probably not though. Be me. Still in the goblin gang. On a quest to find more skilled men to make our lives easier. Any work is too much work. Getting used to being pampered by modern luxuries like clothes and furniture. Need some specialists. After some coaxing and bardic magic first told us where the closest big village was and what jobs people had there. Had a very drunk grog write down a checklist for us since he can do the font from beer barrels. Ponk is real good at reading those. Blacksmith Mason Tanner Taylor Apothecary Barber Potter Cobbler Cooper. Had grog explain to us what all these words meant. After a lesson on human culture and jobs which we didn't really pay attention to we set off to find the town. Knowing where we were going made this trip significantly easier and much faster. Once we approached town we started our usual routine of hiding and sneaking in. Fell apart pretty quick as it was still the middle of the day. After a few tense minutes and bad rolls sexy was spotted by a villager. Just waved and went about his business. Party freaks out and start throwing theories as to what the hell is going on. Alternate universes and mind control were on the table and heavily considered. Not nearly that interesting. Cobbled we left behind got blamed for the thefts and the wagon attack got blamed on orcs. None of the merchants were willing to believe they got throttled by 3 foot tall little girls. 4 goblins. A goblin with a big chest. And an overgrown goblin were far beneath the worries of a multi hundred person village. Apparently as long as we didn't cause any trouble we were free to go about our business. Unfortunately we were goblins and causing trouble was our business. String of terrible decisions started at the local inn where Ponk made an amazing discovery. Weird kinda shiny rocks people carried around could be exchanged for booze. Yellow shiny ones could be exchanged for a lot of booze. Barkeeper was a little skeptical when she had to get on her tiptoes to see over the counter but the giant club swayed him to negotiate. Had the greatest day of her young life. Sexy got in an arm wrestling competition and was cleaning house while the rest of us busied ourselves collecting the winnings and pickpocketing people. Met her match when a barbarian came in. After a few rounds she actually lost. She needed that barb. 
Luckily nobody there spoke goblin and we agreed that when we left he was coming with us whether he wanted to or not. The barbarian assumed our gibberish was us talking about his strength which wasn't entirely wrong. Got kicked out a little later after someone tried to fill up Ponk and she knocked him through the wall. But not before downing two gallons of ale. She's the same size as the rest of us. We're convinced that she stores it all in her chest and it gives her super strength. Soon as sun falls the abductions begin. Start off with the Cooper since he had a wagon and naturally a lot of barrel. Also because he saw us when we were trying to steal said wagon. Gets ponked. Stuff him in a barrel and begin our trip around town. Barbara and Apothecary lived with each other so sexy just shot put it crass and the triplets down their chimney. Sneak through the house stealing everything since plants are light. Triplets break into the spice and powder room. Start stuffing it all in their clothes. One of the triplets produces an incredibly realistic Indian accent that triggers my IT worker PTSD. Fun. Help me rub the 11 essential herbs and spices on my golden skin. Laughing wakes up the apothecary and surgeon. Quickly put them back to sleep. Stuff them in barrels too. Scoot our merry way along towards the craftsman district. Nab one of the smiths who was up late working. Toss some of his tools in the back. Quickly toss them back out when they light a barrel on fire. Tongs didn't look hot. Clattering and yelling wake up some smiths. Book it to the tanner's area nearby. Sexy just charges in. House is filled with wolf and bear hides. The barbarian is the tanner. Demands the barbarian come live with her. Barbarian counters with a challenge. Sexy naturally agrees. We don't have time for this shit. Stuck guarding the door while the two barbarians have a wrestling match. Things got real when they both pop their rage. Knocking the house apart with flying elbows and supplexes. Sexy gets thrown through a wall and into the street. Gets up smiling and charges back in. The militia are starting to show up and the smiths are not happy. Have a nice little street brawl while guarding the door and wagon. Throw some coals and hot metal from the nearby forges onto some rooftops. Let's get it started hot. Finally Sexy comes back out with the barbarian KO'd over her shoulder. Toss him in the cart and smack the horses. Get chased out of town by a small mob. Throw rocks and insults as we leave the now burning town. Get back to the cave. Name the guys after their jobs because we're lazy and it makes life easy. Turns out most of their last names were their jobs anyway. Smith. Cooper. Barber. Tanner. Apparently it's a man thing. Except the apothecary. We just call him Doc. Humans were too stupid to make an easy name for that. Hand them all over to Jack so he can build them beds and workshops. DM decided to be mean and give the NPCs their own personalities. Jack isn't too thrilled about the barbarian. Asks what they have him for. Sexy keeps the strong ones. Nothing else is worth her time. Jack argues he's stronger. Bob challenges him too. Sexy is actively encouraging them. Jack flexes to show off his strength. Bob does the same. While his guard is down Jack slugs him right between the eyes. Bob is down for the count. Looks over at Sexy. I'm the strongest. Stunned beyond words. Rest of us drag the Bob outside and dump him in the woods. Don't need him anymore. Completely forgot that we needed him for leather work. When we come back inside Sexy and Jack are gone. Grump about how they're off having fun while we're stuck doing all the work with the guys. By doing work we mean moaning about the possibility of doing work. Still can't work stone or make pots. Tossed out the only guy who knew how to make clothing. Complain to the guys that we aren't being sufficiently pampered. Most of them were recently abducted from their homes so they don't exactly care. First ends up forcing them all to work because we wandered off to take naps from our long day of being evil overlords. Start keeping track of what we've actually done. Goblinoids are to be attacked on site in town. Farms and caravans have been raided. Part of a town has been burnt down. Cobbled clan has been wiped out. Nearly a dozen men have been abducted and enslaved. Adventuring party knows of us and is actively preparing to hunt us down to avenge their comrade. Realize we've been doing some absolutely terrible things. If we weren't so small and adorable this would look really bad. The true face of evil is waist high. So like, I know nothing about the Monster Girl series, but to be honest with you, I just thought this story was kind of funny, if you know what I mean. It, had some, it did have some really good bits, and um, the guy that wrote it, it was the same guy that did Of Hands and Hookers, you know, similar title, and very, like, come on, it's the same lighting style. I think it's also really good. I love, if you haven't noticed, I do use a lot of the same lighters from time to time. Like, you know, there's definitely, like, a pool of talent that I really enjoy, and they've got, like, 
certain styles and aspects that I really enjoy. Even if, like, you know, like, as I say, I know nothing about Monster Girl. It sounds kind of, like, you know, cringy animation, if I be honest with you. But, look, I thought it was pretty good. And if you haven't got the chance and if you enjoyed this one, definitely go out and check out Of Hands and Hookers. It's got Gay Wizard um, fighting a doomsday cult. It's actually pretty good. If you get the chance, loads of hand in the end. I thought it was great. Um, so, look, hopefully Felix Volp continues this series who knows it's been a wee while since he lived this one if i'll be honest with you so hopefully he keeps it going Um we'll just sit, wait, have to wait and see what happens but to make sure you get the video whenever it comes out whenever he does do it and um, definitely subscribe and all that jazz like you know the deal if you want to you know just just, just, just click subscribe anyway anyway look um hope you've enjoyed and i'll see you in the next video if you haven't already check out my red bubble portfolio you might just find something you like Just stop! Just stop it! Stop! No! Just stop it! It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay? No more! Where the fuck are your parents? Who are your parents? I'm gonna call Child Protective Services! It's time to stop!